For today's EMN5, I'd like to talk about pediatric lower GI bleed, and specifically when a parent comes in showing you a bloody diaper. So let's start off with a case. We have a six-month-old, well-appearing male. He's brought in my mom for some blood in his diaper over the last two days. His abdomen's nice and soft. He's in no acute distress. Looks pretty well hydrated. He's interacting well with mom, calms easily. And he has a little bit of bloody mucus stool in his diaper, as you saw in the previous picture. So are we worried? What's on our differential? To break it down, we're going to first decide, is this blood or is it not blood? Next, is the patient sick or not sick? And lastly, what's common for this age group? Then you add that to the history and you should have some good start on your differential. So first of all, we need to decide, is this actually blood or not in the diaper? In this picture, want to make a guess? This is not blood. So you have to think about other things that can cause red stools in patients, which has a lot to do with what they eat. So for example, in Flaming Hot Cheetos, we see kids eating these all the time in triage. Um, and you can definitely see why those would cause your stools to be dyed red. Other things to think about, Pepto-Bismol can cause some kind of darker, melanotic looking stools. Beets, that's a real common one, especially in the little kids and infants who are eating beets. Jello is real common dye. Think about Kool Aid or popsicles. Markers. I have a family member who is notorious for chewing the tips off the top of her markers. Um, that could certainly dye your stools red. Um, and also frosting that carries a really heavy dye load. In order to test this, it's pretty easy, fast test in the ER, especially if mom brings you the diaper. Basically, just do a hemocult, see if it's positive or not for blood. Another thing to ask parents about are if their patient's recently been on antibiotics. Ceftonir, for example, is also common for turning stools red. Next, we have to think, is this patient sick or not sick? Take a look at their vital signs. Look at the baby. Does it have good tone or does it seem kind of lethargic? Does it have poor cap refill or seem dehydrated? Does it seem in distress? Is it diaphoretic, restless, or does it have a concerning abdominal exam? All these things, you want to categorize your patients as sick and you kind of go down a different pathway for this GI bleed. So for our sick child, we need to think about life-threatening causes of GI bleed, and I broke these out into category by age group. So you have a neonate that comes in, so less than one month. Things you need to think about are volvulus, Hirschsprung's, or neck, or ischemic colitis. In an infant, we start to add on some other things. So between one month and two years old, we want to add on intussusception. Think about a Meckel's diverticulum, which sometimes the patient can be very well-appearing. Other things, infectious colitis, so for example, EGUS, E. coli, or a pseudomembranous colitis. Once you start to get a little bit older, so school age greater than two years, you think more about infectious causes, and also you start adding on IBD, so a Crohn's or ulcerative colitis. But that said, these aren't actually the most common causes of blood in the diaper. I think these are the things that we all think of immediately, especially if we see a little blood in the diaper. But if the patient's well appearing, you need to think about some of the more common causes. So this is again broken down by age group, the common causes of lower GI bleed in a not sick patient. So for neonatal, they could have some swallowed maternal blood. Or think about colitis, so either an allergic colitis, for example, like a soy or milk allergy, or an infectious colitis. In infancy and also probably preschool age, anal fissures are probably the absolute most common cause of some blood in the diaper, especially if it's bright red. Always then think about infectious colitis or again an allergic colitis, especially in an infant. Later on in an older kid, you can also add intestinal polyps to have some bright red blood in the stools in an otherwise healthy appearing child. So the rest of it's all in your history and physical. So let's go through a couple here. So you have a history of chronic diarrhea that's kind of mucusy, maybe some failure to thrive when you're looking at the growth charts. What might you think? Good, so maybe an allergic colitis, a milk or a soy allergy. What if the patient's been really constipated lately? Mom notices the baby's been straining to have stools. Good, anal fissures. What if they have diarrhea, a recent history of antibiotics, and it's really foul smelling? Good, pseudomembranous colitis, or C. diff. What if the patient has diarrhea, a little fever, a bunch of sick contacts? All the family members have diarrhea too. And when you look at the stool, they do have fecal leukocytes. Okay, so you're thinking infectious colitis, so salmonella, campy, shigella, yersinia, or E. coli. What if you have a less than two-year-old with painless bleeding? What's your board's question for that? Good, Meckel's diverticulum. What about a two through five-year-old that is also having some painless bleeding? Probably a little less common, but throw it on the differential. Good, so that's the juvenile polyp. What if they have a paroxysmal pain with current jelly stools? 
That's your classic for indecision. What if they're pretty sick looking? They have a really concerning abdominal exam, kind of look like obstruction. They've been vomiting, seem to be very uncomfortable. Good, so valvulus or indecision. And last thing, if they're vomiting blood, good. Always think of upper GI bleed as a cause for lower GI bleed. So three to remember for this talk when you're thinking through a differential for blood in the diaper. First, you got to think, is the patient sick or not sick? And that's what you start your breakdown by. Second, look at what age group, what are they at risk by? And then correlate all that with your history that mom or dad gives you. And don't forget to check a hemocol. Maybe that diaper is red, but not actually bloody. Here are the references, and thanks for joining us on EM in 5.